Hey everyone, Nick Diabertis here teaching you financial modeling. And today we're going to be going over an example of how to do visualization in Python as part of our lecture series on understanding complex results through visualization. So we're going to add visualization to the dynamic salary retirement model, which we've already built out in the course. So I'm going to pull that up here. And this is the same one which is available as a completed example on the course website. So um, we already have the retirement model and I'm just going to restart the kernel and run all cells so that we have everything defined. Um, and so we already have where we got to ultimately the result of it's going to take 28 years to retire and we just printed out strings of the wealth over time. So now we want to do two things to visualize our results in a better way. One is it would be good to have a table of the salaries and wealths over time so that you can see both the salary and wealth together and each of those over time in a nice format. And then the other uh, thing we want to do to visualize is graph the salary and graph the wealth over time. So we can create a new section of the model. Let's call this uh, results summary. And you would wanna put some description of that here. You can take a look at the completed example on the course website for having this thing fully polished with all the descriptions, doc strings for functions, etc. We're just going to kind of build it out quickly here for sake of time. So um, first thing we want to do is we want to create a data frame, a pandas data frame, which has our results. So coming back to the top, uh, you'll notice that we don't yet have an import for pandas. So we're going to import pandas as PD and then run this cell so that we can actually work with pandas. The other thing that you'll notice because this is kind of the polished completed model is we don't have the uh, setting model data to data. So I'm going to add that back here so that we can develop our functions easily outside the function in the cell and then wrap it up into a function which accepts data and we're not going to accidentally use this global model data. So coming back down to the bottom, now I want to write out the logic which is going to put the uh, salaries and wealths into a data frame. So to get there, I'm going to start from the logic that we had before. Um, so I'm going to copy and paste that down to here. Uh, highlight that all and hold shift and press tab to undo that indent. And then, um, you know, if we take out the return part, uh, we run this, it does the same thing as that function, right? Uh, but we don't care about the print display, so I'm going to remove all the prints here. I'm just hitting Control X. That would be Command X on a map, Mac to uh, just remove a line. And so now uh, we have kind of the base logic without it displaying anything. So what we want to do is we want to store the sal the salary and wealth results in each year so that we can put them all into a data frame and we don't actually have the salary separately in here within the wealth at year function it is determining the salary um, so we're going to want to also separately calculate the salary so that was the salary at year function that got us there and to that we passed the data and also the year so now we have uh, calculating both the sal salary and the wealth in any given year. Um, so now we've got to store that data so we can create a data frame. And any time where you have you know, some kind of loop and you're ultimately going to want to put the results of that loop into a table and you have multiple different columns that you're going to want to have in that table that are all coming out of this same loop, then I recommend using the structure of creating a list of tuples where uh, you can then create the data frame all at once from that list of tuples. You can certainly do the approach of creating an empty data frame and assigning columns, but then you have to maintain separate lists 
for each one of the inputs, which gets a little bit tedious. Um, so first, let's look at um, the recommended approach, and then I'll quickly show uh, the other approach uh, just to show why it has drawbacks. So my recommended approach is to create your uh, list, which is going to store all the tuples. So you create that before the loop. And then at the end of the loop, we can uh, append to that list and we're going to append a tuple, which has the year, the salary, and the wealth all in it, all three items together. Um, and so then we can look at that DF data tupes and we can see that gets us, you know, for each year we have the salary and the wealth. So then we can create a data frame from that. DF is a pd.data frame from the list of tuples and we pass it the names of our columns. So that would be year, salary, and wealth. And then we can look at the data frame. And then we see all this in the data frame format instead. So definitely, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and copy this cell so that we still have our you know, good solution here. And to show you the other way where we first create the empty data frame and then we want to assign the columns. To do that, you would have to have separate lists for each of your values. So years, salaries, uh, wealth, and then you would do uh, you know, years dot append, year, you would do salaries uh, dot append salary, and you would do wealth dot append wealth and then you would do df year equal years df wealth equals wealth and df salary equals salaries so this will produce the same exact data frame um, but this is definitely a little tedious to create individual lists for each one of those inputs and assign those individually when you can just do it all together here single list append the tuple just give it the column names and you're done and this will continue to scale for as many different things as you want to track at once in a single loop so now we have some logic which can produce our data frame let's wrap this up in a function so let's call this um, get salaries wealth df um, and it takes the data and now we can just indent all this and add the return before the df and then when we call this um, get salaries wealth df on the model data then we can see we get the same data frame coming out of that and so now because we set that up with general data you can um, give it any um, values you want. Say you're, you're a high roller, your starting salary starts at 100,000. Now um, we can see the data frame of all those results over time based on whatever uh, different values we want to give to it. So that's why we make sure to uh, structure everything in this way where it can take any arbitrary data and not always the original model data. But anyway, um, so now we can um, get a data frame which contains our salaries and wealths over time with a single command. Um, so then maybe say below this in the next cell, we'll just define that here. And then we can do uh, DF equals that on the model data. So then again, we have that data frame. So the next thing that we might want to do, or we definitely want to do if we're showing this off to the reader, is to add some number formatting here. Uh, we, don't need, we don't care about these decimals, and we don't really want the scientific notation coming in here. And these are all uh, dollar amounts, so it'd be nice to have the dollar sign on those values. So um, 
below this, we can um, try out what we're going to do. So df.style.format, then you pass it the dictionary where you give it the column names and then you, as the values, is how you want to format that column. So I want to put a dollar sign in front and I want to have zero decimal places and I want to have commas and I want that to be a fixed zero decimal places. And then um, I want to do the same thing for the wealth, uh, the same format is going to be fine there as well. Um, so then when I do that, then we can see a much nicer representation of those values over time. Um, and another thing which we could possibly do here to help understand these results is to add the inline bar graph here. Um, so we can do it. We don't want it on the year column. We just want it on the salary and wealth columns. Um, and then we can see, you know, it makes it a lot easier to see those jumps for the promotions, right? We see this immediate break in uh, <clears throat> the length of the bars, representing that the salary or wealth um, jumped. And um, we might also want to hide the index here. The index is not useful here. Um, and now we've got a pretty nice display of these data. So now what I recommend just always for our data frame styling is we want to wrap this in a styler function. So um, let's uh, style salaries wealth can be the name of the function and it takes a data frame and then I'm going to uh, indent all of that and then I'm going to return the result of that. Um, so then that's defined. So then um, we can uh, below this then we're getting our data frame and then we want to style the data frame and that's what we're looking at. So now two lines of code here off of any set of data that we want we can get this nice styled uh, representation of the salaries and wealths over time. So then the other thing that we want to do is plot our results. So um, we have our original data frame still and this has the original values. It's not the styled one. You can't do any plotting on the styler object, only on the data frame itself and we want to do a plot. And let's do a line plot, and we want our x to be the year, and let's uh, just plot the salary right now. Uh, so there we can see the salaries over time. Um, now I could have plot both the salary and wealth on a single graph, but uh, we can see there's definitely a scale problem here where the wealth has a so much larger scale than the salaries, and so it doesn't make a lot of sense to put these on the same graph. So we can have the salaries, and then we can have the wealth separate from that. Um, so we can uh, plot the wealth here separately. Um, so line line plots are perfectly good for this. You know, you could do something like a bar or an area plot instead but uh, I think the line is perfectly fine for this. Um, and now we have a nice display of all of our um, information in the model. So that's a, an overview on how to add visualization to an existing Python model using Pandas. And this uh, concludes our lecture series on understanding complex results through visualization. So thanks for listening and see you next time.